Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV. It's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Gigon and these are the headlines. After an impending demand, Shamodo subdivision is now Nagaland's 16th district. This comes after a meeting between the Yimkyun Tribal Council, Dikir Tribal Council and representatives of the state government, including Chief Minister Nifidio. The Ahmadmi Party named Amit Palikar as its chief ministerial candidate for the upcoming assembly elections in Goa. AAP National Convener National Arvind Ketual said that the party will be contesting all the 40 assembly seats in Goa. Citizens call out Islamabad's crackdown on freedom of speech, abuse of police power. A large number of locals in the Shekhar district of illegally occupied Kilkit Palestans demonstrated against the government. Three naval personnel died of injuries caused by an explosion on board Indian Navy's destroyer ship INS Ranveer. A board of inquiry has been ordered to investigate the cause. Now for the news in details. In a good news for Gohima city dwellers, Smart City Gohima has made it to the top again this time. The state's capital city is among the top 10 Indian cities which won the Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge for a three-year initiative aimed at making public spaces friendlier for young children in India. Announced on Monday, Gohima stood as one of the 10 winning cities in pilot stage one, which has been selected from 63 cities across the country by a jury of experts, including representatives from Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Gohima was selected for its pilot stage project of trans transforming a roadside garbage dump into a green community-funded micro-park and adapting a schoolyard into multi-purpose public space for young children and caregivers. The state capital also made it to top 11 cities under Streets for People Challenge initiated to create better street and friendly streets. To tell us more on this, we have in our newsroom our senior news analyst, Al Nguli. Thank you so for joining me. Hello, Naomi. So first off, uh, can you tell us what smart city means? What are the criteria to become a smart city? And how did Gohima achieve such a great feat? Yeah, uh, before anything, congratulations to Gohima again. Dimapur and Gohima has been fighting over this for a long time, but uh, Kohima, this, uh, Kohima city turned out to be the better city here. Congratulations to Kohima. Uh, yeah. uh, the smart city project is an urban development uh, project of the government of India. Uh, it is a very technology driven kind of a project. I'll just give a, a very simple description of what it means. A smart city is a highly technological and technology driven urban urban city that uses technology extensively to make the lives of citizens better in uh, it's, it's an in a nutshell. Uh, the more complex ideas behind it is, is that it uses information technology, data, and analysis to deliver and improve services that are meant for the citizens. And also it envisages to uh, it make more efficient government's delivery service uh, delivery system in its services and it also of course like works on uh, more important infrastructure uh, vertical such as roads for example electricity and its services more accessible and more efficient for the people uh, NAMI. Sir, so you know are there any possibilities in the future for other districts in Ireland as well to be you know transformed into a smart city? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it would be wonderful to have a Mon smart city or a Noclux smart city one day, Naomi. That would be really wonderful. But I will connect to the first question you asked. The criteria is a bit long and a bit complex here. Normally, uh, the criteria that a smart city has to accomplish goes all the way from proper and good road connectivity, for example, efficient power supply, efficient billing systems, solid waste management, and also uh, we have delivery services su uh, such as, uh, for example, commercial services and their infrastructure and how they serve the citizens. All these aspects need to be first in a proper place. It should be developed to some extent before you would be called a smart city. Currently, uh, the government of India, they are selecting only cities with over one million uh, people in population, state capitals and cities that have been, I mean, that have developed to some extent to be called a smart city. So if you look at a criteria, uh, Naomi, uh, the challenges for, let's say, other districts other than uh, Kohima or Dimapur will be a little more difficult. It is very. Dif it might be difficult for the next, I, I think, 20 to 30 years. So, spreading this mission to all the districts will be a bit, um, a bit of a challenge right now. I'll mention one thing: uh, the government of India started the mission way back 2015, and it is financial. The financial input of this mission is huge, Naomi. It's rupees 790,000 crore. 790,000 crore, or that's about 96 billion. So it's very finance intensive kind of a mission. So the government is very selective. So right now it's only the state capitals, cities with people over 1 million uh, in population, and cities that have a level of development and proper infrastructure to their name, NAMI. Okay, so, so what is the aim of grading such uh, smart cities and how will it attract development? Yeah, uh, that's interesting because uh, I was talking to someone and that person actually asked the, the same question. How can having uh, screen, touch screens in the streets or how can having apps in your phones actually enable, enable you to become part of an ecosystem that actually brings in development? Well, the answer is, uh, I, I think, it's very simple. So um, first thing, uh, I'll just focus on the development aspect now because I think I've already covered how, uh, what the qualities of a smart city is. So let's, let's look at the roads, for instance. Um, I'll give a very, very simple explanation here. If you have good roads, then certainly people are going to come in. They're going to travel over there. They're going to choose that road instead of going to, uh, in go instead of taking one road, they're going to take the more developed proper road. And when people travel on that, people are going to set up shops because this is the road that people use often. And when shops come up, more infrastructure comes up, comes up. And when infrastructure comes up, you have employment opportunities. People start coming and living there and start, they start doing business. So townships are created, employment opportunities are created. So that's how it brings in development NAMI. Okay, so, so uh, has the government set any deadline for the creation of smart cities? Uh, yes. Uh, it was started way back to uh, 2015 and the deadline is, the deadline for the implementation of the smart city project is 2023. So we'll be seeing some results of it uh, around next year, uh, Naomi. Okay, sir, thank you so much. Thank you, Naomi. Moving further. Highly placed sources have informed Hornbill TV the Chamado subdivision is officially a district. This news comes after a meeting was held between the Yimkyung Tribal Council, Tikir Tribal Council and representatives of the state government including Chief Minister Nifirio on January 19 in Bohima. The recognition of Tikir as a separate Naga tribe was also finalized. In the Memorandum of Understanding, it was stated that no coercive measure shall be adopted by any of the councils and to ensure retention or reversion of any member of Tikir community, the Yimkyung community or vice versa. 
The MOU further stated that every member of Tikir or Yimkyung community, wherever they are, shall have the freedom to choose the community to which he or she belongs. Lastly, the subject of any issue or dispute between the members of the two brother tribes should be localized and resolved through customary laws, practice and status quo will be maintained. Manipur is set to conduct its assembly elections in two phases for the 60-member house on February 27, followed by the second phase on March 3. While the state is currently under BJP's rule with Ann Biran Singh as the chief minister, many reports have been doing the round that the BJP is planning to ditch Conrad Sangma's National People's Party and join forces again with the Naga People's Front. To shed a little light on the NPF's stand regarding this, Hornbill TV spoke to the Secretary General of the NPF, Achumbe Mukikon. I just wanted to know, according, there were some reports in, uh, you know, different media houses that uh, the Pre-Poll Alliance will be again with BJP in Manipur for this year's elections. As of now, nothing has been decided officially as of now. Okay, sir. Of course, uh, we are in the government running together. Mm -hmm. So that speculation can continue. There is no problem about it. But uh, as far as the coming election is concerned, we, there is no uh, official arrangement as of now. We are all trying in our own way to contest. Okay, sir. And uh, last time it was 10 seats. Will the NPF be contesting in more seats? or will be lesser seats how many do you think is the party going to contend for well uh, as far as the influence of the nbf is concerned mm -hmm. in uh, 25 assembly constituencies we have our own uh, workers our party men mm -hmm. and uh, active members are in, enrolled in these 25 constituencies mm -hmm. uh, including some of the constituencies in the valley mm -hmm. uh, However, as far as the election is concerned, we will we have uh, received application from 16 constituencies as of now. Okay, sir. So we will have to decide uh, whether we will fill the entire 16 or uh, reduce it to 10, 11. That is uh, yet to be officially decided. Mm, okay. And sir, uh, what about the NPP? Last time, uh, NPF, NPP were kingmakers in the election. So what is the relationship between the NPF and the NPP, uh, you would say, uh, this year? Well, uh, NPP is a party that also functions on its own. NPF is also a party. We function on our own. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, 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 uh, you know, it mm -hmm. so happened that we all came together under the same government that BJP in Manipur. Yes, sir. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is no official kind of uh, arrangement between NBF and NBB as of now. Okay, sir. So, uh, would you say there were reports saying that the BJP will align with NPF and kick out the NPP? So, you are saying that there has no... Uh, there's Talks have not been uh, on this as yet. Is well, uh, BJP has uh, their own reason to uh, take a stand on their own. We cannot stop them, whichever way they okay. are. But as far as NPF is concerned, we are friendly to all political parties mm -hmm. uh, in Manipur, mm -hmm. especially. Of course, uh, we are in the government uh, mm -hmm. with the, with two cabinet at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that is being, you know, headed by BJP. So our understanding with the BJP continues. There is no uh, doubt about it. But uh, as far as their statement of for or against, uh, B I mean, BJP statement for or against NPP, we have got nothing to say about it. Okay, sir. All right. The United Sangdam Students' Conference, or USSC, has sought clarification from the Directorate of School Education in regard to transferring or deploying teachers. A statement from the USSC received here on January 19 asked the Directorate about the grounds the establishment transferred employees without relievers and transferring them along with posts from the district. 
The USSC stated that more than 20 teachers have been transferred from the area within one year as part of rationalization or redeployment exercises, the organization stated. The statement demanded immediate countermand of the transfer orders within 15 days. The USSC is all set to engage in agitations if their demand is not fulfilled, the statement said. A large number of locals in the Shigar district of illegally occupied Gilgit, Baltistan demonstrated against the government, especially the law enforcement agencies, after they arrested a social activist, Ahmed Cho Shigari, for expressing his dissenting opinion on a social media platform. They chanted slogans against the superintendent of police and urged him to bust real crimes and apprehend real criminals such as those involved in smuggling instead of harassing common citizens. The protesters also said that the police had launched a crackdown against the people of the region and had created a situation reminiscent of a despotic rule. India reported 282,970 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours with a daily positivity rate of 15.13%, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare informed on Wednesday. The fresh infections are 2,369 more than yesterday. On Tuesday, India logged 228,018 fresh COVID-19 cases. With the addition of new cases, the total cases of COVID-19 in India rose to 3 crore 79 lakh 1241 including 18000 18 lakh 31000 active cases active cases account for 4.83% of the total cases the country has so far detected 8961 cases of the omicron variant of covid-19 as per the health ministry there is an increase of 0.79% in omicron cases since yesterday the daily positivity rate is at 15.13%, while the weekly positivity rate is at 15.53%. Meanwhile, the country's recovery rate stands at 93.88%. The ministry said that 1,88,157 people recovered from the infection in the last 24 hours, taking the recovery tally to 3 crore 55,83,039. The country also witnessed 441 new COVID-related deaths in the last 24 hours. As many as 4,87,202 people have succumbed to the infection so far. Addressing a cabinet briefing in New Delhi, Union Information and Broadcasting Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur on January 19 said that the cabinet has approved infusion of Rs 1,500 crore in Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency Limited. This will enable RIEDA to lend Rs 12,000 crore to the renewable energy sector, said Thakur. आज निर्णय लिया गया कि 1500 करोड़ रुपए का इक्विटी इन्फ्यूजन इंडियन रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी डेवलपमेंट एजेंसी लिमिटेड में किया जाएगा और इससे लाभ यह मिलेगा कि अतिरिक्त इक्विटी के आने से रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी के सेक्टर में इरेडा अब लगभग 12,000 करोड़ रुपए तक की लैंडिंग कर सकेगा, जिसमें लगभग साढ़े तीन से चार हजार मेगावाट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी की क्षमता के स्वर्जन के लिए फाइनेंसिंग का प्रबंध हो जाएगा। The Aam Aadmi Party on Wednesday named Amit Palekar as its chief ministerial candidate for the upcoming assembly elections in Goa. AAP National Convener National Arvind Ketchewal made the announcement during a press briefing in Panaji, Goa. Ketchewal said that the party will be contesting all the 40 assembly seats in Goa. AAP failed to win a single seat in the 2017 elections despite running an ambitious campaign.
pitching 39 candidates for a 40-seat strong assembly. Senior Congress leader B. Chidambaram on Monday asserted that the contest in Goa assembly elections is between Congress and the party Chanda Party, the ruling party in the Bolpaun state. In his assessment, Chidambaram said the AAP and the Trinamool Congress will only fracture the non-BJP vote, as has been confirmed by Ketriwal. Hitting back at Chidambaram, Ketriwal said people of Goa will vote where they see hope and Congress is hope for BJP, not Goans. The Delhi Chief Minister recently held a door-to-door -door campaign in Kortalim village of Goa. Ketriwal, who was the star campaigner for the AAP last time, was seen interacting with voters in Kortalim. Goa will go to the polls on February 14 and the counting of votes will take place on March 10. Scheduled international commercial passenger flights will remain suspended till February 28, a notice issued by the Director General of Civil Aviation said on Wednesday. The restriction does not apply to international cargo of flights, TOS approved by the DGCA and flights from countries with which India has entered into an air bubble arrangement. Earlier, the DGCA had extended the ban till January 31, 2022, revoking its decision to resume scheduled international flights from December 15 onwards. Meanwhile, India recorded 82,970 new COVID-19 cases and 441 related deaths in the last 24 hours, ending 8 a.m. Wednesday, data updated by the Union Ministry of Health showed. The active caseload has increased to 18 lakh 31,000 up from yesterday's 17.3 lakh. The daily positivity rate has also increased to 15.13%. The Omicron tally has reached 8,961, an increase of 0.79% since yesterday, the ministry said. While addressing a cabinet briefing in New Delhi, Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Youth Affairs and Sports, Anurag Tagore on January 19, stated that the tenure of National Commission for Safai Garam Charis has been extended for another three years by the cabinet. The Union Cabinet has approved the extension of tenure of the National Commission for Safai Garam Charis for three years beyond March 31, 2022, said Thakur. Safai Garam Charis was made सफाई कर्मचारियों के किसी समूह के संबंध में कार्यक्रम अथवा स्कीमों को बनाने का सुझाव देना हो सफाई कर्मचारियों द्वारा उठाई जा रही समस्याओं को हल किया जा सके और वे सम्मान पूर्वक जीवन यापन कर सके सफाई कर्मचारियों की कठिनाओं को दूर करने के लिए लक्षित निर्णय दिशा निर्देश जारी करने का काम किया जा सके इस आयोग की जो कार्यकाल है उसको पहली अप्रैल 2022 से बढ़ाकर अगले तीन साल तक के लिए बढ़ाने का निर्णय कर दिया गया है गोवा चीफ मिनिस्टर प्रमोद सावंत ऑन जनवरी 18th सेड दैट पार्टी जनता पार्टी वुड फील्ड इट्स कैंडिडेट्स इन ऑल द 40 कंस्टिट्यूएंसीज इन द फोरकमिंग असेंबली इलेक्शंस सीएम सावंत एडेड आई हैव बीन चीफ मिनिस्टर फॉर 3 इयर्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट वाज डन इन 3 इयर्स वी ट्राइड टू टेक द सेम scheme launched by PM Modi to the people of self-reliant India. We are fighting on all 40 seats in Goa. We will form a majority government, he said. The government has been working for 10 years and I am working for 3 years. In 3 years, the infrastructure development, human development, and especially in COVID-19, Modi has started the Atma Nirbhar Bharat Yojana, the Atma Nirbhar Bharat Yojana, वही योजना हमें सेल्फ रिलायंस स्वयंपूर्ण गोवा बोलके लोगों तक पहुंचाने की कोशिश की हम 100 परसेंट गोवा स्वयंपूर्ण बनाना चाहते हैं उसकी शुरुआत मेरे कार्यकाल में हुई ये मुझे गर्व है 
और सिक्सटी एथ ईयर लिबरेशन में जो हमने काम किया वो सभी लोगों को मालूम है द फर्स्ट टाइम कि अच्छी तरह से सिक्सटी एथ लिबरेशन का कार्यक्रम जिस कार्यक्रम राष्ट्रपति रामनाथ श्री रामनाथ कोविंद से स्टार्ट हुआ और जो माननीय पंतप्रधान नरेंद्र मोदी जी से उस कार्यक्रम का हमने एंड किया उस पूरे कार्यकाल में कोविड होते हुए भी हमने अच्छी तरह से कार्यक्रम किया लोगों को पूरे यानी साठ साल के अचीवमेंट और आगे आने वाले साठ साल का विजन लोगों के सामने रखा In a press conference address on Supreme Court's judgment on Devas and Drick's issue, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on January 18 said that UPA got cancelled this deal in 2011. Supreme Court has given a comprehensive order, said Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman. And Drick's appear, appeared in agreement with Devas in 2005 during the UPA government. It was a fraud deal. UPA government cancelled this deal in 2011, said Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman. your attention on is about the supreme court's order yesterday on the antrix devas issue i'm sure many of you all who been watching this whole process since 2005 when antrix entered into an agreement with devas and that itself Beca became a controversy during the upa government agreement was signed during upa in 2005 and post the agreement it took 6 full years for the upa themselves to cancel the order in 2011 reacting to his relative abarna yadav joining party janata party samajwadi party president akhilesh yadav on january 19 congratulated her and said that the samajwadi party's ideology is expanding while addressing a press conference he said firstly he congratulate her and he is happy that samajwadi party's ideology is expanding nida ji ub cm mulayam singh had of try to convince her he added samajwadi vichardhara ka vistar ho raha hai samajwadi vichardhara ka vistar jo ho raha hai mujhe ummeed hai ki hamari vichardhara wahan bhi pahunch kar ke और संविधान और लोकतंत्र को बचाने का काम होगा नेताजी ने बहुत कोशिश की समझाने की नेताजी ने बहुत कोशिश की समझाने की टिकट अभी पूरी नहीं बटे हैं और टिकट किसको मिलना है किसको नहीं मिलेगा ये क्षेत्र और जनता पर निर्भर करता है और हमारी इंटरनल सर्वे रिपोर्ट पर भी निर्भर करता है